Hi everyone, in this video I'll show you the new features that we've added to make BriefCam even better. The first new feature that I'll show you is that we've added license plate recognition. And this feature works similarly to the face recognition feature in that the license plate is like the face of the vehicle. Now let's have a look at the product itself. And you'll see here in the filters that we've added this new filter for license plate recognition. When you select a thumbnail, you can add the plate to the filter by clicking here on the Add Plate icon. Or when you click to play the thumbnail, you can add it here by clicking Add Plate. So if a license plate was recognized, you can click on one of these icons to add it to the filter. And then you can search for other appearances of the license plate. You can also manually add here a plate by clicking Add Plate. You can add letters and numbers, and you can also use the question marks and the asterisks as wild cards. Now here in the Mismatches Allowed drop-down list, you can select whether to allow between zero and eight mismatched characters in the search. So if you select two, plates with two mismatches or less will be considered. You also have here the Show Plates button, and when you click that, you'll get all license plates that were found in the video. Now you can also search using a watch list, like we do with face recognition. And also here, watch lists are defined in the user settings. So we'll click here on user settings, and you'll see here now that we have both face watch lists and LPR watch lists. If we create a new watch list, you'll see that you can either manually enter the license plate numbers or you can upload them from CSV files with the license plates. You can also define smart alerts to trigger when a license plate appears in a video. And this feature can also be used in research dashboards. By detecting the same license plate in two different cameras, we can calculate the average speed if we know the distance. So we use this to create a dashboard that shows the average speeds of vehicles when the distance is set. The research module's flexibility lets us calculate this within the dashboard, even though this KPI is not actually measured by the video analytics engine. Now using this dashboard, you can easily see here the distribution of speeds across time and across vehicle class, and also set the speed limit and quantify how many vehicles were speeding on a specific road. And you can retrieve the license plates of the speeding vehicles. So here we have the number of speeding vehicles. But down here we can change the speed limit. So right now we're looking at any vehicle that passed 80 kilometers per hour. But if I slide it down here to let's say 100 kilometers an hour, I'll see that 730 vehicles were traveling over 100 kilometers an hour. And then I can click here on this button to export the license plates that were speeding. And now we'll have a look at the new line crossing feature. If we look here at the video source, you'll see two changes. We've changed the options here to icons instead of words. So here we used to have the word area and the word path. And we've added here a third option for line crossing. If you click on it, you can then draw a line and look for objects that crossed over the line in this direction. So let's say if I draw a line from this point to this point, and the arrow is pointing in this direction, but I actually want to see if there were any cars that traveled in the wrong direction. So I'll go down here and click on this icon, and click Apply. And you'll see here that it recognized three license plates of vehicles that traveled in the wrong direction. And when I click here on the video source, I'll see the three vehicles that traveled in the wrong direction. Line crossing is also available in the Respond and Research modules. We've also added the new people counting alerts, and you can use this to monitor areas where there is a predefined increase or decrease of people in the range of view or in a defined area. This type of alert 
is ideal for queue and waiting areas that are crowded with people that are static, meaning that they're not moving. And if you want to count people that are moving through an area, it's recommended to use path-based or line crossing based counting. And the people counting data is retrieved every few minutes. By default, it's by every two minutes. So you see here when you get an alert, it shows you how many people were counted in the frame or the area. And we also have a new built-in dashboard for you that shows you how you can use this new feature in research. Using this dashboard, you can see the average number of customers in each of the checkouts, and you can keep track if the guidelines that were set are being complied with. You do this by setting the maximum allowed customers in a checkout. So in this dashboard here, we've set it to 10. And then you can see here in this chart how many times this number was exceeded. This can be used to better manage checkout lines. Let's say, for example, that this checkout is the express line. We can easily see that at nighttime, there are many people that get in this line. So now the manager may decide to open a second express line during these hours. Note that in the research module, the people counting has separate filters. So you'll see here all of these filters that begin with the word people counting. So the people counting data won't be seen together with the other objects data. So for example, if you filter on a specific date, it won't affect the data of the people counting. Now I want to show you an enhancement that we added to the face recognition feature. Now in previous versions, when you were searching using watch lists, you were searching for people on the watch list. Now there's an additional option to set the search to exclude. So you'll be searching for people that are not on the watch list. You can also generate respond alerts when a person who appears in a video is not on the watch list. One other thing I want to point out is that now the user can change their own password and no longer needs the administrator to change it for them. Now there were some other changes that were made to the respond module. The respond module now includes a bookmarks tab where you can access all of the saved alerts. And in the rules tab, you can now see at first glance if a rule is a count based rule because here next to the rule type, you can see the words count based. We've also added here where you can filter your alerts by plates or faces. Now there were some additional changes that were made to the research module. And in addition to the license plate and people counting dashboards that we mentioned, we also have the smart city dashboard. And it contains various typical KPIs for smart cities like the number and average duration of vehicles and pedestrians according to times, junctions, and crosswalks. A new visualization was added called Dashboards Details, and it's useful for changing the default dashboard that opens when opening the research module. In the custom objects, we added here a few more options. We've got the Export button and the Word Cloud Chart. And we can see the use of the Export button here in our new LPR dashboard. So by clicking here on this button that we created, we can export the data to an XLS or CSV file without having to load the data to the memory. We have a few more charts here that were added, the container and the MECO chart. So now let's just quickly recap our new features. BriefCam 5.6 now offers license plate recognition line crossing, people counting, and the ability to search for people that are not on a watch list. So that covers what's new in 5.6. And for even more information, you can check out the release notes and of course the user manual. Thanks for joining us and have a great day.